What's going on guys, Crater here, back for a new video, and this is This Week in Universe Mode. I go over everything you need to know that happened this week on my Raw, SmackDown, and 205 Live. First things first, let's go over what happened at Extreme Rules. The one night of the year when the Raw Superstars get to go to the Extreme, and by God they did. Let's first talk about how Paige fought Alicia Fox in the Falls Count Anywhere match for the Raw Women's title. These women took it all the way to the crowd, and Alicia Fox, shocking victory over Paige, I think shocked everyone, including myself. She is now the new Raw Women's Champion. Paige is great for us title defense. She lost. What is going to be the mindset of Paige? Hopefully time will tell. We also saw Extreme Rules, possibly the greatest match I have ever seen, as AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn in a two out of three falls match for the United States title stole the show. It was one and one. Sami Zayn won one victory, AJ Styles with two victories. But after three phenomenal forearms, it did Sami Zayn in. But what I'm saying right now is not doing that match justice. Please go watch that match. It is something that you do not want to miss. It's possibly the greatest universe mode match I've ever called here on my YouTube channel. We also saw Roman Reigns taking on Braun Strowman in a submission match, which ended in a no contest, which was obvious that both men were not willing to submit, so the match had to end in a no contest, which up the air what happened with these two superstars we found out on Monday Night Raw. Before we go over that, we have to go over the main event of Extreme Rules, which was John Cena taking on Brock Lesnar for the Universal title in Extreme Rules match and Brock Lesnar brought his A game, which Cena did not have. After German suplex after German suplex, Brock Lesnar was able to the F5 to retain his universal title. But shocking result is that Brock Lesnar actually decided to extend his hand out to John Cena, but Cena was not having that in a stressful John Cena walk to the back. And that was it for the Extreme Rules pay-per-view with Brock Lesnar leaving out still the Universal Champion. Now how did this lead into Monday Night Raw? Well it was announced at the very beginning of the show that Brock Lesnar's next title of events will happen at the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, the co-branded pay-per-view, the first co-branded pay-per-view on my universe mode. And since John Cena failed to beat Brock Lesnar for the Universal title, we need a new number one contender. So we decided that in four weeks at the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view, we'll find out just that as it will be a fatal four-way match determine a brand new number one contender for the Universal title. It will be the Architect, Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, and Baron Corbin who will be competing in that Fatal 4A match. All three of those men were able to beat John Cena leading up to Extreme Rules which earned the net spot in the Fatal 4A match. There was one spot left which we found out in our main event of Monday Night Raw which saw the phenomenal one, the United States Champion AJ Styles faced Roman Reigns in the main event, which saw the phenomenal one get the victory, which named him the fourth man in the Fatal 4 match. Now the stage is set, guys. At Great Balls of Fire, the Fatal 4 match, which will see Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, Baron Corbin, and United States Champion AJ Styles do battle in the Fatal 4 match with the winner earning the right to face Brock Lesnar for the Universal title at the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. We saw Braun Strowman taking on Baron Corbin in our opening match of two of the four competitors that will be heading into the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view in that Fatal 4 match. And Braun Strowman took out Baron Corbin in second, probably frustrated on the fact that he did not beat Roman Reigns at Extreme World that ended in a draw. And he sent a message to Corbin and Rollins at that time since we did not know Styles was going to be the fourth man. That at Great Balls of Fire, he's going to become the number one contender for the Universal title. Speaking of Seth Rollins, we saw Rollins and his good friend Dean Ambrose taking on the Ascension and tag team action with Rollins and Ambrose being victorious as Rollins continued to gain momentum into a fatal four way match. But what happened after the match for the Ascension was kind of weird. We saw Gallows and Anderson taunting them. We haven't seen Gallows and Anderson since really them losing the number one contenders match against Brizongo for the Raw Tag Team title. So why are they taunting Ascension? I have no idea right now. Speaking of Tag Team Champions, the brand new Raw Tag Team Champions. Yep, you heard me right. Brizongo was able to defeat Shane Cesaro to become the brand new Raw Tag Team Champions. So they had their first match when they beat the Colognes as now they know that at Great Balls of Fire, they're gonna have to defend their titles as Shane Cesaro already invoked the rematch clause will be taking place at the Raw exclusive pay-per-view, Great Balls of Fire, where they'll be defending their titles against the bar. Will history repeat itself at Great Balls of Fire? We'll find out a month from now. And to wrap things up here, on Monday Night Raw, we're actually wrapping things up with the Cruiserweights as it was decided that the next challenger for Neville's Cruiserweight title 
will be determining a series of matches that will determine a number one contenders match. And if ever won that match, will be taking on Neville for the Cruiserweight title. We saw a fatal foray match. It's Grand Metal League who won the shock of everybody. Grand Metal League has been like the sleeper horse here in 205 Live in the Cruiserweight division. So he'll pick up that victory. So he is now qualified in the number one contenders match for the Cruiserweight title that will be taking place in the coming weeks here on 205 Live. Who will be his challenger? We'll be finding out next week. Now, the reason why I brought up the cruiserweights in general last is because if you guys didn't see at my Extreme Rules kickoff show, the huge announcement is that a superstar shakeup will be taking place. Due to the influx of talent between the two brands, Raw and SmackDown, it's been decided that the cruiserweights on Raw will be getting their own exclusive home, which is on 205 Live. 205 Live will officially become its own entity, has nothing to do with Raw anymore. But because the Cruiserweights are such an essential part of the Raw roster, a superstar shakeup is required to balance out the roster between Raw, SmackDown, and 205 Live. So in two weeks from now, 205 Live and the Cruiserweights will have nothing to do with Monday Night Raw. So which superstars will be switching brands to either Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, and which new faces from NXT will be making their presence felt in either Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live. This superstar shakeup will be taking place the day after the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. That's something you do not want to miss, guys. Now with that announcement, let's get things back on track with 205 Live that took place this Thursday. As we saw, Ideal Tommy beat Mustafa Ali. Ideal Tommy feels that he's better than everybody else here on 205 Live. And the fact that he wasn't part of the Cruiserweight qualifying matches really frustrated him. But Mustafa Ali also called him out on that. It's all in these two men fighting each other. In the end, Ideal Tommy was able to be victorious, making his claim that he should have been part of the Cruiserweight qualifying matches for a number one contender spot for the Cruiserweight title. So I guess he's going to make his own road leading up to the top contention for the Cruiserweight title. And even though Grand Meta Leak won on Monday Night Raw, that did not stop him from losing his momentum on 205 Live as he lost to Cedric Alexander on 205 Live. Now, this is a huge loss to Grand Meta Leak as he thought he was gaining momentum from Monday Night Raw heading into his number one contenders match. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I was going to make his presence felt as he wants to be next contender for the Cruiserweight title with the lumbar check. With that, he's able to pick up the victory. Now, Sega Alexander is a part of the next Fatal Four match we take place on the last Raw where the Cruiserweights will be part of and taking place next week, which I'll be going over at the end of the show. So, you do not want to miss that. Who are the participants for that match? And now, in the main event of 205 Live, even though he lost and failed to catch the Cruiserweight title against Neville. That didn't stop him from making his presence felt yet again as why he should be back in championship contention. And Drew Gulak took on Var Devar in the main event. But before the match could even take place, TJP attacked Devar Devar before the match even started, pretty much making it one side and easy pickings for the submission specialist to take out Devar Devar to make his statement for 205 Live that he's gunning for the Cruiserweight title opportunity again. What does TJP have a problem with with Advari Davari and is it ever going to be resolved? We're going to be finding out in the coming weeks, guys. Now we're switching gears to the blue brand for SmackDown Live as we saw Joe and Hawkins taking on Bobby Roode and Akira Toriyazawa in a tag team match. So we got a similar match last week with Nakamura and Mahal, but this time we have Roode and Hawkins in the mix. We have a very interesting scenario with a very different outcome as this time we saw Samoa Joe get his hands on Akira Toriyazawa and made him tap out in the middle of the ring, winning the tag team match for both him and Hawkins. Now again, we both know the implications between these two teams, as Samoa Joe will be taking on Kira Toizawa at Money in the Bank, which is two weeks away, and a 10-minute Iron Man match to settle their differences. For Samoa Joe, this is all about Kira Toizawa surviving 10 minutes with them, because he knows there is no way in hell that Kira Toizawa can be in, but for Kira Toizawa, it's for redemption that he knows for a fact that he can beat Samoa Joe. And as for Byron and Kurt Hawkins, well, these two will finally be able to go one on one in two weeks at Miami Bang. And for Byron, this is all about making sure Hawkins is not making a name off of him and his expense. And for Hawkins, this is about making a name off Byron. So it is something that Byron does not want to happen. He has no problems finally getting his hands on Kurt Hawkins. All he had to do is wait two weeks. Two weeks, Rude. We also saw WWE champion Jinder Mahal calling out the King of Strong Style and his challenger at Money Bank for his WWE title, Shinsuke Nakamura. Jinder Mahal called out Nakamura 
pretty much telling him, hey man, I beat you at Backlash. I didn't need to help with Sting Brother. Even though Sting Brother did help him, he felt as though he didn't need help Sting Brother that he could have beat him anyway. Well, Nakamura told him, hey man, you're just going to have to prove it on Money in the Bank where there will be no help from Sting Brother. You will literally have to prove that now you can actually beat me. And the King of Straw style feels as though that he can beat Jinder Mahal and win a title that has eluded him so far here in WWE, which is the WWE title taking place in two weeks, guys. One of the biggest rematches that we have here on SmackDown Live for the Blue Brand as Shinsuke Nakamura will be taking on the modern day Maharaja. Jinder Mahal for WWE title at Money in the Bank where the Singh Brothers will be banned from ringside. Speaking of a few matches at Money in the Bank, two of the participants that will be fighting in the Money in the Bank ladder match had a one-on-one -on -one match here on SmackDown Live as we saw the SmackDown Live in-ring debut of Chris Jericho as he fought the Bulgarian boot Rusev and it showed in this match Chris Jericho did not lose a step at all beating Rusev in game momentum into the Money in the Bank ladder match which will also feature Randy Orton, Finn Bauer, The Miz, and the Intercontinental Champion Kevin Owens. And then our main event in a shocking turn of events that we were not expecting on SmackDown Live. The SmackDown Live Tag Team title, The Usos beat Benjamin and Gable to become the brand new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. And after putting insult to injury, The Usos attacked Benjamin and Gable. Benjamin and Gable wasted no time invoking their rematch clause. So at Money in the Bank, Benjamin and Gable get their rematch for the SmackDown Live Tag Team title. Are they facing the brand new champions, The Usos? What are their frame of mind right now that they just lost the titles that they just won at Backlash. Could this be signaling the end for the dominant reign that Benjamin Gale that we thought they had? And this will be time for the Usos to take their spot as the top of the mountain here in the SmackDown Tag Team Division. We'll be finding out and Money in the Bank guys will be taking place in two weeks. Now let's switch gears here to the social media side of things here on our universe mode. As we saw Naomi taking a shot at Natalia, which is exactly the opposite of what happened the last time we seen these two bowing out here on social media as Natalia fought Oscar this past week on SmackDown Live, a match that was supposed to take place two weeks ago, but due to Charlotte's interference, that match never really came about. In the end, the SmackDown Women's Champion Oscar was able to beat Natalia. Naomi pretty much called Natalia out saying, you thought I didn't belong here on SmackDown Live? You just lost to the SmackDown Women's Champion. Look like the tables has turned, Natalia. And then Naomi also put out an interesting post after that by saying, hey, since you have nothing to do at Money in the Bank, and I have nothing to do at Money in the Bank, let's have a match against each other to see who really, truly belongs here on the SmackDown Live Women's Division. Natalia fired back and saying, hey, I have no problem exposing you for who you really are. And after I beat you at Money in the Bank, it will show that you do not belong here in the SmackDown Women's Division. Hopefully, you get fired. Really harsh words here coming from Natalia, but I can exclusively tell you guys right here on This Week in Universe that the match is now official at Money in the Bank, which takes place in two weeks from now. Natalia will be going one-on-one -on -one against Naomi to sell this little beat that they're having on social media that blew up into a lot more than what people probably thought was going to happen. Can Naomi prove Natalia wrong that she does belong here in SmackDown Women's Division? Or will Natalia prove herself right and beat Naomi? We'll find out in two weeks, guys, as these two women will be clashing at Money in the Bank. Continuing here on our social media hub, we saw the big show calling out Mike Kanellis. As we saw last week, Kanellis pretty much had a huge diss against Big Show saying, as long as he's not part of the Money in the Bank ladder match, I'm fine with not being part of it because that would have been a waste of talent. He's been here for 20 years doing nothing. Big Show obviously took offense to that saying, hey man, you want to make it here to the business, you have to respect the people who came before you. I have no problem teaching you a thing or two in respect. So next week, I'm calling you out and issuing a challenge at Money in the Bank. Will you accept? Well, Big Show, you might be calling out Mike Kanellis next week on SmackDown Live. But in terms of him accepting, you don't have to worry about that because the decision has already been made that the Money in the Bank kickoff show will be taking place the day before the Money in the Bank pay per view. You and Mike Kanellis will be going one on one to sell your differences. So, the real question on SmackDown next week will Mike Kanellis even come out to even confront you about it? That is the real question. We'll be we finding out next week, guys. Speaking of next week, let's go over the other things that are going to be taking place on SmackDown Live, which we've seen two huge matches, guys. First off, Chris Jericho, who was on a huge momentum roll heading to Money Bank, issued a challenge this past week on social media. Hey, guys, I'm back and I'm better than ever. I'm one step closer heading to Money Bank. There's one thing I want to do first. 
is to face the person who is holding my title. Jordan Mahal, I'm challenging you to a match this week. And your wish has been granted, Chris Jericho. This week on SmackDown Live, you'll be facing the WWE Champion, Jinder Mahal, one-on-one. -on -one. What's gonna happen when these two superstars clash for the very first time here on the Blue Brand? And we'll be gaining their momentum to their respective matches at Money in the Bank. For Jinder Mahal, it's all about beating Shisuke Nakamura at Money in the Bank. For Chris Jericho, it's all about winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. And also on SmackDown Live, you have a huge main event as we've seen for the very first time here on the Blue Brand. The Intercontinental title will be on the line as Kevin Owens must defend his title against The Miz. Now, just like how the Usos beat Benjamin and Gable to earn their opportunity, The Miz defeated Kevin Owens a couple weeks ago here on SmackDown Live to earn his opportunity for the Intercontinental title. So now Prize Fighter had to defend his biggest prize that he has right here on SmackDown, which is the Intercontinental title. Could we be seeing the same result that we saw this past week with Benjamin and Gable losing their titles, with Kevin Owens losing his Intercontinental title to The Miz? I mean, but the 4-1 odds thanks to Miz Rise Maurice, it's pretty much looking like it for the prize fighter show that when it comes to a big match fight, he always delivers. As for 205 Live, you know you will be seeing some exciting action this coming Thursday. Your road focus should be on Monday as it will be the final time that the Cruiserweights will be appearing on Monday Night Raw before they become their own brand on 205 Live. And if go off with a bang, we've seen a fatal four-way qualifying match, the second one for the number one contender shot for the Cruiserweight title as we'll be seeing Cedric Alexander taking on Noam Dar, taking on Lince Dorago, taking on Drew Gulak. Whoever wins will be meeting Grand Metal League on the very first 205 Live after the Superstar Shakeup to determine a number one contender for Neville's Cruiserweight title. And speaking of Monday Night Raw, guys, let's talk about what's going to be happening on that show as well for the Red Brand as we'll be seeing Sami Zayn returning for the very first time in action since losing his opportunity at the United States title for the very last time. He gets no more matches with Styles for as long as he's champion. He looks to bounce back from that and forge a new path for him on the red brand as he's taking on Dolph Ziggler one-on-one. -on -one. Can Zami Zayn bounce back to a new role that he's gonna set himself up to success? Or will Dolph Ziggler bring him back down even lower than what he already is right here on Monday Night Raw? And speaking of Styles, John Cena, who we haven't seen here since losing to Brock Lesnar at Extreme Rules, took to social media and had a very interesting note. Cena took to social media addressing his loss to Brock Lesnar, but also calling out AJ Styles in the process, saying that he wants to challenge the United States Champion. Well, your wish has been granted, Cena, and our main event of Monday Night Raw will be seeing the leader of the C Nation, John Cena, taking on the United States Champion, AJ Styles. These guys put on classic matches in the past, and this Monday on Monday Night Raw, the show is to be no different. And with that, guys, thank you guys for watching. As always, this is Crater, and this has been your week in universe mode.